Hey guys, Steve here with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm going to show you how to properly remove your rear wheel and install it back on your dirt bike. So whether you need to replace your tire, your tube, maybe your sprocket, or even a rotor, you need to know how to properly remove and install your rear wheel. So today I'm going to show you how to do that on this 2019 KX450. Now these procedures you can use on most dirt bikes. To do this job, you'll need some basic hand tools, a torque wrench, and any replacement parts that you'll need. You'll also need a copy of your OEM service manual for more information, proper procedures, and specs. First, let's start by putting your bike on a bike stand, preferably with one that your rear wheel is closest to the ground. This will make the removal and installation a lot easier, but whatever you have works. Next, let's uh, remove the axle nut. Now, keep in mind that some bikes you might need to remove the discard, but on this one, we don't need to. Now some bikes might have cotter pins, so you may need to remove those first before you remove the nut. Now let's remove the axle. If you're going to use a hammer, use a rubber mallet and try not to damage any of the threads. Now as you slide the axle out, you might need to hold up on the wheel a little bit. This will make it a lot easier. Now roll the tire forward a little bit and remove the chain. Now that the chain's off, switch hands and use your left hand to hold the wheel up and grab the caliper with your right hand and slide them both out together. Now pull the caliper out of the way and roll the wheel the rest of the way out. Now make sure not to lose your wheel spacers and also don't lay it down on the rotor side. You don't want to damage it. Now while you have your wheel removed, make sure not to press down on your brake pedal. This will make the installation a lot more difficult. Now if your buddy presses down on it, he gets to install your rear wheel. Now that we've got the rear wheel removed, let's wipe down and clean all of our parts. Now this would also be the time you'd want to do any maintenance or repairs. Now that we've cleaned those, we need to inspect the swing arm, especially where the caliper rides back and forth on the swing arm, and obviously the guide where it slides on the swing arm here. Um, you can check out your brake pads or spots on the, where your axle goes through, and then obviously we want to check out our wheel spacers, bearings, and seals while we're at it. Uh, we have kits here at Rocky Mountain ATV MC that you can use to replace those. They're really pretty easy to do. Now if you have damaged chain adjusters, we have a video that you should check out on how to fix your damaged chain adjuster bolts. We can also, you can also use our Tusk uh, chain adjuster bolts. They're pretty inexpensive and they're easy to use. We've also replaced this particular bike with these bolt uh, chain adjusters which don't require a lock nut. They're really smooth, they work well, and it makes adjusting your chain really slick. Next let's put a light coat of grease on our axle. Now that we've got that done, let's install our rear wheel. Now we need to install this the same way that we took it apart. So let's slide the wheel in slightly, rotate the caliper in, slide it over the disc, and then we will slide everything in together. Now push the wheel a little farther forward so that you can get the chain and just walk it right on. For most stands, you can put your foot underneath the tire to hold it up so that you can make the install much easier. Now pull it back a little bit and we'll slide the axle in. Now if you've cleaned and greased your axle, it should slide right through, but if it doesn't you choose to use a hammer, use a rubber mallet and tap it lightly. Now let's install the washer and nut. Now that we have our axle nut hand tight, we need to check or adjust our chain slack. This would be a good time to check your service manual for your specific bike's chain slack specifications. Now this bike requires two inches of chain slack. You can see that it has way more, so let's go ahead and adjust that so that it's within our specification. Now these chain adjusters are pretty sweet because they don't require a lock nut, so you just turn it back and forth to adjust your chain. Now for the guys using stock chain adjusters, you're going to want to loosen the lock nut and then adjust both axle blocks evenly to the right mark on your swing arm. Then go ahead and tighten down your axle and then tighten your lock nut. Another tip with stock chain adjusters is a lot of times you'll have a gap between the axle block and the adjuster itself. A quick solution to that is if you take a rag and you put it between the sprocket and the chain and rotate your wheel back, it will force your axle blocks up against the adjusters. Then you can go ahead and tighten down your axle nut. Now when doing this, use the marks on the swing arm and the adjuster block so that you can adjust both sides equally. Now let's torque the axle nut to 81.1 foot-pounds. Now let's spin the rear wheel and pump the brake to make sure that it's working correctly. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Come check us out at RockyMountainATVMC.com for more parts, apparel, and accessories. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is Steve. We'll catch you next time.